Screen Time Stories is presented by Pinwheel, the therapist-backed smartphone that supports kids and teens through summer break and every other day. Fitness and education apps encourage kids to stay moving and avoid what teachers call the summer slide. Special features keep kids on a set routine and meeting up with their friends just a call or text away with no worries about getting pulled into mindless games or YouTube rabbit holes. I'm Julie, and as a parent, I'm sometimes overwhelmed by the challenge of raising my kids in the age of screens. Embracing technology in modern parenting is a must. Our kids will log on whether we like it or not. So let's lean into the challenges and joys of parenting with tech while we learn from the latest research and experts in the field. This is Screen Time Stories, Parenting Techniques for Raising Tech Natives. Let's figure this out. If you're a subscriber here, you know that everyone I've talked to about issues we face when we're parenting with tech, they all give tips about the specific topic, but then say, it all comes back to having a strong relationship with your child. Um, So I want to get a handle on the basics today, having a better relationship with my kids. And Dr. Michael Rich agreed to help me out. Dr. Rich's research has been reported on by major news outlets like the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, CNN, and NPR, and he's also authored policy statements for the American Academy of Pediatrics and testified on the media effects on child development and health to state legislatures, the National Institutes of Health, and the U.S. Congress. In addition to being a father, he's the founder and director of the Digital Wellness Lab, a pediatrics professor at Harvard Medical School, and he practices adolescent medicine at Boston Children's Hospital. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to chat with him, especially going into summer break and having the opportunity to share a lot more quality time with our kids. Um, This is a great time of year for us to make that effort to grow closer. Um, so here's a little tidbit. We all knew the pandemic would negatively impact our kids, but I actually have some good news. Almost half of the teens surveyed in a recent study said they feel even closer to their parents through the experience. That's according to a Pew Research study just released this month. I'll always take a pandemic win, especially one that's this promising. Um, Before talking to Dr. Rich, let's run through some parent-child relationship basics. This is the most important relationship our kids have because it teaches them about the world around them, helps them understand safety, security, and love. But it's also the foundation for how they'll build future relationships. It's a lot of pressure, right? (laughs) And since every kid is unique, there's no clear parenting path for us. We'll all make mistakes along the way, but we can do our best to create environments where our kids feel comfortable to grow up to be themselves. We can do this by showing and telling our kids we love them, hugging them, making eye contact with a smile, kiss on the head, and simply interacting with them. It all shows love. Remind them verbally every day too, especially when they make a mistake, even while you uphold the consequences to their actions. But simply going through the motions and words isn't quite enough. We want to connect with our kids by trying to understand their feelings and letting them know how we're empathizing. We want to connect by playing their game with them, even if it means getting a makeover and catching earthworms. And of course, we can't do all of this properly if we're distracted. So we need to leave the phone in another room, turn off the TV, and embrace that trickle of glitter that's falling from our hair as we hold up a fat earthworm and say that it's the largest earthworm in the history of worm kind. We want to eat meals together and do all the special routines that make our relationship with that specific kid. I want to hear from the expert though. Dr. Rich, I get so burnt out on juggling sports schedules, appointments, cooking dinner, and staying on top of everything. Sometimes it's hard to focus on simply building a stronger relationship with my kids. You know what I mean? We have kids because we seek family. We seek connectedness. We seek the kinds of things that we value being passed on to future generations. So. I think the first thing we have to do is remember why we wanted to have children 
and remember to enjoy them. Um, what this is built on, of course, is open communication. And that doesn't mean one-way communication from parent to child. That means two-way communication between parent and child in which the parent really focuses on listening, not thinking through to their next question or their next statement in the child, but really hearing what the child is saying, not just in terms of the objective words, but also the subjective feelings they're communicating. And that seems pretty basic, but it's actually exactly what I needed to hear to feel grounded. Sure. I mean, we tried to keep the family corporation going, keep the wheels turning. And I think that applies not only to appreciating and enjoying our kids, but appreciating and enjoying our spouse as well. And remembering that we came together to raise this child. Um, even in an adopted, an adoptive situation, um, there's a reason we decided to bring this child up in this world. And I think we have to reclaim the joy of that and, and really understand that we're grateful for this relationship. This is not a chore. This is a relationship that we're grateful of and we are extending beyond ourselves. And hopefully we and that child can be greater than the sum of our parts. I love that reminder to be grateful. It's easy to get caught up in everything and forget. So now that I'm feeling more grounded, what steps should I take? I want to make my relationship with my kids as strong as possible. Many parents that I see often with kids who are preteens and teens feel that somehow their relationship is not as good as it could be. Um, part of that is that they expect the relationship they had with that very young child who saw their parent as a superhero, um, as all protecting, all knowing. Um, that child is growing up. They are understanding that their parents are not absolutely perfect. Their parents are not necessarily superheroes. And they, by recognizing that, that changes their stance in relation to their parents. And we want that. It is absolutely normal and desirable for kids to step out, seek autonomy, become their own individual selves, not just that person's son or daughter. Um, and so I think that a lot of times parents forget that or, or don't know that, and they want that kind of adoration and obedience that they had when they were younger. Um, and that's not going to happen. So I think that one of the things that can best be done is for parents to say, I miss you. I miss being with you. I miss talking to you. What's going on? How, what in your life, what's happening? Um, sometimes that's better done in a car driving somewhere where you're strapped in and not having to look at each other. Um, or on a walk or a hike somewhere that you're not having to be eyeball to eyeball across a table, um, and allow the child to speak. Really listen to the child. Don't pressure or interrogate or um, try to um, elicit some response from them, but let them find their comfort zone and open up to you. They do want to be heard. They do want to be seen. Um, but oftentimes are very nervous about being judged or being found less than. So it's really important for them to hear from parents how the parents appreciate them. That's wonderful. I love the concept of just saying, I miss you. Yeah, because that sort of surprises them. Right? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's good to... Um, Surprise your kids a little bit with that, but also I think it's really helpful to acknowledge that we're not perfect. They think that anyway, but when you let them know that you agree with them, that you have feet of clay, um, it opens up all kinds of possibilities for them to move into 
what eventually will happen is a peer relationship with you, you know, as your friend, as an adult friend. And they are making that very rocky sometimes transition from childhood to adulthood um, and need your openness and your support in that process. We, we have to recognize that as they become adolescents, they are developmentally driven to step away from family and seek out peers more. And so instead of clinging to them, um, knowing that that's going to happen, helping them negotiate that transition in ways that are safe, um, in ways that are respectful of themselves and others, um, and also rem- finding ways to continue to have fun with them on their terms. You know, so instead of saying, we're going to go do this, say, what do you want to do? You know, um, and, you know, sometimes it's just walking the dog together. Sometimes it's, you know, an adventure or they want to go to an amusement park or something of that nature. That's fine. Give them increasing control, increasing agency in their life. So here's a little story time tangent. Um, The other night I started to take the dog out for a walk and I asked my son if he wanted to come along. I actually have the dog sitting in the room with me right now because she's my coworker. Uh, We have this nice little trail behind our house that leads to a river and the whole walk, we didn't even really talk and it was really special to me because I was watching him do this thing where he'd Um, sort of skip over the shadows on the trail and he was jumping up CrossFit style onto stumps and we barely spoke to each other even though we walked for about an hour just watching him move around being together it gave me a better understanding of who he is and where he's at developmentally speaking he's a big kid he's 13 and going into eighth grade but I realized that I've probably been treating my kid like he's more mature than he actually is and for him on the inside he's just skipping around and perfectly happy to walk around and not talk about anything but just be together just hang out I think we have to appreciate being together in silence as well as doing things together and and talking with each other. Um, And one of the interesting things is that sometimes we want these children, particularly as they get taller and get deeper voices and have, you know, maturing bodies, that uh, we want them to be adults in many ways. And it's not that they are doing this steady, gradual slope up to adulthood it's a series of stair steps and they don't all happen at the same time. And you can have a a young adolescent who one minute is acting like they're 17 and the next minute they're acting like they're eight. Um, And both of those realities are true for them. It's sometimes hard to separate that as a parent and say, well, this is valid. They're still young. They still have a lot to learn. And it's okay to ask them about it. You know, say, that's really cool how you skipped over the tree shadows and jumped up on that stump. Um, Just say that to them and let them respond or not. But let them know that we appreciate them and that we notice them. I like that. It doesn't have to be a conversation. I'm not interrogating my kid about it. But just saying, I noticed it. And if we want to keep walking and skipping in silence, then that's up to him. It's very cool. Uh, Dr. Rich, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. My main takeaway today is to enjoy my family. To have fun with my people while I appreciate who they truly are. If your family is facing a challenge with tech, let me know what it is and I'll find an expert to help you out. Just email me at julietpinwheel.com. This episode was produced by me, and I'll share another one with you next week. Just hit subscribe to stay in the loop.